Hey everybody, uh, Michael P. Spradlin back for another story, uh, another chapter rather, uh, chapter five of The Enemy Above. Um, thanks to all of you who are keeping this going for me and uh, responding and sharing with uh, young readers and and uh, old, re old readers and readers readers uh, uh, as we make our way through these very strange days that we're living in. Um, I hope uh, all of you are safe and healthy. I have, we had uh, uh, a happy, if somewhat unusual, Easter. Um, and I hope uh, that uh, the weeks ahead will bring us closer and closer back to being the way things were before this all started. Um, also, uh, just my daily reminder for uh, to ask you to please, let's watch out for each other. Um, let's uh, help each other in ways that we can. And, uh, and when we make our choices every day, uh, let's let one of those choices be kind to each other. Okay, so back with chapter five of The Enemy Above. Where are we going, Booba? Anton asked as they trekked through the dark woods toward Verbata. It was slow going. They picked their way carefully across the forest floor. Anton guided Booba over knotty roots and under low hanging branches to make sure she did not fall. Your uncles have found a shelter for us, she said. Dimitri says it's big enough to hide us and many other Jewish families. But he and Pavel have not told me where it is. They will find us and lead us there. If the Gestapo catches us before then, we cannot reveal the location if we do not know it. Anton thought about that. It was a good plan. However, after the encounter with soldiers earlier, he decided he would feel better if he knew where they were going. The forest hid them temporarily, but soon they would once again have to cross open ground. They were not at the crossroads, Anton said. I'm sure they saw the soldiers. Do not worry, Kinder. They will find us. How do you know? Because I have faith. God will provide. The way she said it told him the subject, as far as she was concerned, was closed. Looking up at the stars that peeked through the clouds, Anton was fairly certain they were headed north. Finally, they emerged from the forest onto a dirt path through another wheat field. The going was easier now, and they made better time until Anton heard the snap of a branch up ahead and stopped in his tracks. Shh, Bubba, wait, Anton whispered. Taking her by the arm, he led her off the path and back into the wheat. Snap! Whatever was making that sound, it was getting closer. Anton spied a wagon pulled by a team of horses and driven by two men. All he could tell was that they were dressed in dark clothing, but he dared not call out. Collaborators were everywhere. Sometimes they captured Jews and took them to the Germans, hoping for a reward. Other times, they simply reported the Jews' whereabouts. Who was to say the men in the wagon were not dangerous? Muther, one of them whispered. Mother, Anton sighed in relief, recognizing his Uncle Dimitri's voice. He and Bubba stepped into the road as the wagon rolled to a stop. Uncle Dimitri, Anton tried, and he could not keep the excitement out of his voice. Dimitri smiled at his nephew. We thought you might come this way when we saw the Gestapo in the wheat field, he said. This is Sergei, a baker from Verbata. He lent us the use of his wagon. Come now, we must hurry. The two older men helped lift Abuba onto the wagon seat. Dimitri drove the team while Anton and Sergei settled into the back of the wagon, which was loaded with supplies. They set atop a number of burlap sacks. Anton smelled potatoes and cabbage. Buba stared at Dimitri and pursed her lips. Where is Pavel, she demanded. Dimitri sighed. Anton could tell that his uncle did not want to answer, but Buba would not be denied. He's gone. To the militia. He knew you would not understand, but he loves you, Muther. He promises to come back to you. Buba closed her eyes and did not speak a word. What was there to say? Pavel's fate was now in God's hands. Where are we going, old Dimitri? Anton asked. Someplace safe, Dimitri said. Is it far? He pressed his uncle. It is as far as it needs to be, Anton, Dimitri said. Many Jews have been taken. We cannot outrun the German army. So we will run as far as we can. Then we will hide. Anton was about to ask another question, but his uncle interrupted him. I understand you are nervous and afraid, but we must travel quietly. The noise of the wagon will drown out the approach of foot patrols. We must be silent and listen and watch. Pay attention to the sounds of the night birds. Steady the horizon. If you see something, say something. I promise all of your questions will be answered soon. Anton did as his uncle instructed. The four of them traveled along the path in silence. The ground was rough and uneven, and the wagon squeaked and groaned as the horses plodded over the bumpy terrain. With each passing moment, Anton grew more uneasy. The encounter with the soldiers in the wheat field had completely unnerved him. Up until now, 
the war, the Nazis, and their Juden-free policy had all seemed like some distant abstract thing. Just gossip that the elders in the village square used to add drama to their stories. New pa newspapers used the rumors to frighten people and sell more papers. But tonight he had seen the soldiers walk past him, close enough to touch. Soldiers with guns who would shoot him down if they spotted him. Everything he had heard was true. He was just a 12-year-old boy, and yet they hunted him. He had broken no laws, done nothing wrong. He was simply born Jewish. How could anyone want to kill him for it? As the wagon rolled on, he could not help but imagine that there were Nazis watching him now. Perhaps they hid in the shadows, following the wagon until it had arrived at their hiding spot. Once there, the Gestapo would burst from their hiding places and capture Anton's family and the others who were only looking for a safe place to hide. Buba had told stories of the pogroms, tales of how the old Russian Tsar had sent Cossacks, his soldiers, into Jewish villages all over Ukraine. Thousands of Jews were dragged from their homes and shops. The lucky ones were only forced to watch their homes and businesses burn to the ground. The unlucky ones were murdered. His other grandmother, Ruth, had been unlucky. Those who could fled in fear. Now they were running again, and this time they were being hunted. Bubu would often tell Anton that she hoped a day would come when he might live as a Jew without fear. That day seemed a long way off. And try, try, Anton tried to do as his uncle instructed. He strained to listen to the sounds of the night. He scanned the horizon for suspicious movement. The fact that it was a moonless night was a blessing and a curse. The lack of light kept them hidden, but it cloaked their enemies as well. The farther they traveled, the more wagged, ragged and nervous his breath grew. Sweat crawled across his forehead and trickled down his cheeks, disappearing beneath the collar of his shirt. Several times he thought he saw something odd and nearly climbed out in alarm. But each time the mysterious lurker proved to be only a tree or a bush, not a waiting Nazi. Whenever it happened, Anton felt foolish. He forced himself to remain vigilant. Finally, Uncle Dmitri pulled the reins and the wagon came to a stop. We're here. Anton was confused. They were in an open meadow with only a small copse of trees and a pile of boulders nearby. There were no buildings, no cabins, not even a tent. Could his uncle be lost? I, I do not understand. Is this it? Are we going to build a shelter? Anton asked. Yes, Anton, this is it. But our shelter is already built, Dimitri said. But there is nothing here, Anton said. You will see. You and Buba will remain here with the supplies while Sergei and I go gather more food, Dimitri said, helping Buba down from the wagon seat. But we will not be safe out here in the open. Patience, Anton, Dimitri said. Follow me. Sergei remained with the wagon. Dimitri took Buba by the arm, leading her toward the rock formation, which stood about 40 meters off the road. Anton followed along, carefully picking his steps in the darkness. He could not imagine how his uncle could consider this a safe place. Then they arrived at the boulders, and he understood. Two of the giant rocks tipped against each other. There was a small space between them. It was the opening to a cave. Dimitri let them inside. They had to descend to a small slope, but eventually the floor leveled out. Once safely inside, a match was struck and an oil lamp lit, illuminating the faces of at least 20 people. All of them had come for the same reason. Their cheeks were streaked with dirt, their eyes were tired, their expressions laced with worry. But for the moment, they were safe. And that's the end of chapter five, and we'll see you next time with chapter six. Everyone be good.